Hello everyone, it's been a minute since my last upload. I've been super busy, but I'm happy to be back and share with you another DaVinci Resolve tutorial that I think you can find useful. Hi, my name is Donovan, and I'm here to demystify DaVinci Resolve for you so that it won't seem quite as complicated or daunting from wherever you're coming from to use DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to take uh, any footage from any camera and convert it into something that I think looks much more pleasing or into a color science that you maybe might want. So in this example, I have a Sony a7S III filming an SOG3, but one of the things about that is that's clinically a great looking image. So it shows up incredibly on a color chart, but I don't think it's very pleasing to the eye. So I'm gonna show you how I get it to look from, uh, you know, maybe technically correct, to artistically looking really, really nice and pleasing. So I have here a project that I'm working on for a local spa or an injection spa. And I have my talent come in from the outside door. I'm just on a monopod. I follow her as she comes in, sits down on the couch. A little bit about this scene. All I have is uh, daylight coming in through the windows. And then I have like a 60 watt diffused daylight uh, light on the other side of her face, but that's it. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty typical normal looking scene. Nothing super crazy. So this is what the clip actually looks like. Uh, just raw, straight out of camera with a very simple um, Rec. 709 conversion. So the first thing that I like to do with footage like this, and this is something that's available to you. It's been here in DaVinci Resolve for quite a while. It's not actually a new feature, um, but all you have to do is do a quick color space transform from the Rec. 709 into uh, your preferred color space. So I'll show you how to do that. On my keyboard, inside the color tab, I'm gonna select the node and hit Alt S. And once I've done that, I'm gonna come over here to my library. I'm gonna search for ACES Color Transform. Now the input, we know the input uh, color space. So we're gonna go to Sony S-Log3 S Gamut 3 dot Cine, cause that's what I was filming in. Now, as soon as I click this, it's gonna look real funky. Now, that's because we're taking it and we're just converting it to, uh, basically we're converting it to Rec. 709 twice. Um, and so obviously we don't want to do that. Um, but uh, I now I just need to tell it what the output, output transform needs to be. Um, so what I'm gonna do is select this. And lately, one of the ones that I've been using that I find really pleasing, that I really like, is the black magic design film gen 5. now you can do whatever you want in terms of how you convert it but i actually really like this one that it, that it uh, transforms into so you can see here that the yellows are looking a little more plush a little more pink uh, in the skin tones and overall i think just has a more pleasing look to it, it softens a lot of the highlights and just brings everything together really nicely but i don't have any contrast or uh, saturation, and uh, there are a few other things that I want to do to this image before I consider it done. However, this is the first thing that I like to do when I'm going for a specific look. And one of my favorite looks is just to convert the color space straight over to Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. There are a couple other things that I can do to make this image look really, really nice. One of the things which I actually forgot to cover because it was already applied to the clip is just a basic white balance. So if I disable everything that's been done on this clip, you can see that the original, original shot uh, even had some incorrect white balance on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the node grade so I can show you the process of how I got that white balance corrected. And I click on this node, and I'm not gonna go through the process of creating a complicated node tree today, um, but I do recommend when you're doing professional work to use a node tree. And the reason for that is because any adjustment that you make, you can isolate to a single node inside that tree so that you can go and you can disable any adjustment that you've that you've made independently of the other ones and so you can see the difference that it makes to your image and you can make adjustments and decide if you want to keep it that sort of thing but for the purposes of today i'm probably only going to use just a couple of nodes again just to keep things nice and simple let's say this one is just going to be for white balance i can rename it if i really want to so white balance and my favorite way to do white balance is not to use uh, temperature and tint. I know that if you're coming from Photoshop or from other editors, that's typically how it goes. But in DaVinci Resolve, it's actually my least favorite way to get correct white balance. Um, and I'll show you the, the way that I prefer to do it. And that is to use uh, down here in the color wheels, I'm going to use my offset. I'm just going to click and drag the centerpiece 
to uh, where I think the white balance looks good. So I'm going to drag it over here, and then I'm probably going to drag it down to add a little bit of green into it, maybe over just about there. And to me, to my eye, that looks like correct white balance. It looks really good. So uh, if I show you the before and after on this individual node by just clicking the node number on the, on it right here, you can see that I've already got a much nicer pleasing image. And now this is a little on the cool side for the look. So if I wanted to adjust that, I can bring a little warmth back into it, just like that, which I might leave like that. I think that looks really, really nice. So now let's make another node and we'll call this one contrast. Now there's a couple of ways to add contrast back into the image. Uh, one way is to just literally just slide the contrast slider over here. And technically that works, but I don't love doing that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to double click on the word contrast down here and reset it. So my favorite way to add contrast is to actually come down here to my curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect or unlink all of the RGB uh, uh, sliders here on the curve. What that's going to do is that's going to make it so I can adjust the uh, custom curve for just the luminance. Um, and so that'll allow me to dial in my contrast exactly how I want it. And then I can add as much saturation as I want after I've already dialed in my contrast. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say that probably about right there looks pretty good. And right there. And this one I'm actually going to rename instead of white balance, I'm just going to rename as white balance plus exposure. So I'm going to come back to this one just because again, I can isolate them if I want, but I wanted to bring up the exposure a little bit. Maybe the shadows down. There we go. Mids. That looks pretty nice. Already looking much better. All right, let's go back into contrast. And let's bring up the highlights even more and give it some contrast just like that you can see there already looking very nice so let's add another node and we'll name this one <clears throat> saturday <clears throat> no it's saturation so now that i have a saturation node now i can add saturation per color channel um, so i want to be very careful when i'm adding saturation back into the image because if i just crank the saturation down here then I can get some of the elements of the image looking pretty good, like her pants, uh, maybe her shirt, that sort of thing. But then you have some of these air problematic areas like her lips are right here on the underside of her nose that are just way oversaturated. And so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to double click the word saturation to undo that. Now inside of this node, I'm going to go to my uh, hue versus saturation over here. And I'm going to just click on the things that I want saturated, and I'm going to add a little bit to them. So let's start with the uh, the blue area here. And we're going to add some nice saturation into that. And let's go from here to here in the orange range. And we'll add some saturation to that. And if I really want to, I can come into the color warper add a few more points here, zoom in, and I can select her skin tones right there. And I can add a little bit of saturation over here on the right side, which that's already looking much better. Her lips might be a tiny over, bit oversaturated, but they're looking pretty good so far. So I'm very pleased with that result. So I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard to bring it back to a full view of the, of the video. Now I'm going to show you what the saturation node is doing for us. And you see that and there's a big difference. I'm not oversaturating these yellows in the background. Uh, her lips, uh, I think, look more pleasing. They're not oversaturated either. And it's overall just looking much, much nicer. Here's a before and here's an after. And you can see it's cleaning this image up really nicely, just making it look super, super good. Now, if I really want to, um, I can add a little bit more stylization here, but I think I'm actually not going to do that. So I'm going to go back into my edit i'm going to go to effects and go to the toolbox here and i'm going to search for adjustment clip and i'm going to bring that over top my image and go back into my color tab and because the adjustment layer is on or adjustment clip is on top it's davinci resolve is going to automatically select it on top let's say i just want to add a little bit of 
kind of bluish teal into the shadows just to make the skin tones pop even more than they already are. They're already looking very good. But let's say I wanted to do that. So I'm going to come into my color picker here, my qualifier. I'm going to select the skin tone. And I can't see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm going to turn on my highlight here just to show what I'm highlighting inside of the qualifier. And I'm going to refine this just a little bit. We want to select her skin tones, narrow it down just a bit like that. Maybe soften it, widen it. And that looks pretty good. We're going to increase the blur radius. We're definitely going to denoise the ever living crap out of it. Okay. Now you can see that if I play it back, that looks pretty good. It's not flickery, not too flickery. There's a little bit in the back, but that's not going to be noticeable. Okay. So now that I've selected that, I'm going to invert the mask. All I have to do to invert the mask is come and click this button right here, which is just to invert it. Now I have everything selected except for the skin tones. Now that I have that selected, I'm going to disable my highlight button up here, and I'm going to add a little bit of bluish teal into the shadows. The way I like to do that is just to come over here to my log wheels, come over to shadows, and I'm going to reduce the reds and increase the blues. It's very subtle, very, very subtle, maybe 0 0.02, 0 0.02 on each, both taking out and adding to the shadows. And if you see here, it looks like it's just making a very subtle difference. In fact, it's probably not even going to show up on YouTube, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that looks good. Really like that. I'm going to add another node. Let's just for the fun of it, add a glow effect. And we're going to have to go to more so at the beginning of the image to see the effects of this glow. So let's go right here. That's definitely going to be something that's going to glow. And I'm going to do the shine threshold and you lower it to include more. So let's go with maybe that right there. That looks very nice. And there's just a very soft glow to the image. You can see that what it's doing to the image. It's just a subtle effect. So now if I go back and play this back here, she comes in, goes over to sit down and it looks so good. It looks so much nicer. You can see here that if I disable, look at all of the things that we're doing. That's the before, that's the after. Incredible transformation, this clip. It looks so, so nice. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your patience. While I've been working on a few things behind the scenes in preparation to kind of kickstart my YouTube channel up again. And so if you guys like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And show me some love down in the comments. Tell me if you learned something today, if you're going to be using this technique in the future. And if so, let me know how. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.